Um, so we want to continue uh, teaching about the kingdom of God, to look at the gospel from the standpoint of the kingdom. This is not some kind of um, quirky doctrine. Jesus himself said that we're supposed to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14, he says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So we want to preach and teach the word of God from the standpoint of the of the kingdom of God. And we also want to keep people abreast of what's going on spiritually. You know, people get all caught up with the news and and the world and what's going on in the world with, you know, uh, things that are happening. And uh, as ministers of the, of the gospel, the servants of God, apostles of God, prophets of God, you know, God says he doesn't um, do a thing unless he first reveals it to his servants, the, the prophets. You need to know what's going on spiritually. You need to tune in with God. Everything with God is being, it's about being one with him, being on the same page with him. Amen. God is in heaven. We are on the earth, but God wants us to know what is his will, what's in his heart. And so um, we had prophesied recently about the reigns of God and God had given us a prophetic word about how that he was raining down righteousness and uh, the Lord has spoken recently to me. Um, he's, he's talking about how he is doing things in mass. You know, when you think about the reigns of God, the, the reign is able, God is able for his reigns to be upon the just and the unjust, you know. And the Bible says in the book of Acts that God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Jesus when he was risen from the dead, he says, I have authority over all flesh. And so we are in a time um, which is the, the time of harvest. And it's a time of awakening where God is doing things in mass. Amen. By his spirit, he's touching many, many lives at, at one time. And uh, the word that the Lord spoke to me today was that just like in the, in the days of um, Moses, amen, when the children of Israel were in bondage, that God released all of his people from captivity, the captivity of Egypt. Egypt represents the world. And so the Lord has spoken to me recently that he's dealing with institutions that have held his people captive, um, whether they are religious institutions, whether they are um, educational uh, institution, whether it's politics or government, all those institutions that have held God's people in captivity in mass, that God is going to be delivering people in mass, that there will be um, healings in mass, there will be salvations in mass, deliverances in mass. Amen. And so that's what God is doing in these days that's by the spirit of the Lord and by awakening by the spirit of the Lord. You know, that's that's what we do. The, the spirit should be upon the word of God. So when we preach and teach and speak the word of God, that that it should spark something in you. Amen. If you if if you are asleep, it should awaken you unto righteousness. Amen. And so prophetically speaking, that's that's what God is doing in and those that um, that connect with us, those that subscribe to us from time to time as, as the Lord gives me something to tell the people, that's that's what I'll do. I'll tell you what God is doing in this land, what God is doing in this earth. So God is is doing things in mass. He's delivering people in mass from all those institutions that I've held them bound. God is going to begin to deal with those institutions just like he dealt with Egypt. Amen. And so those religious institutions, those those educational institutions, anything that has blinded and held God's people. Amen. That that salvations will occur and deliverances will occur because this is the end time harvest. And so God is speeding up things. 
by doing things in mass. Amen. And so we want to continue in the gospel of the kingdom of God. We want to continue to teach you now about how God does things, God's ways. Amen. And uh, we want to show you the dynamic between heaven and earth, that God is in heaven. We, his people are upon this earth, but we're supposed to always be connected with God. Amen. And so Jesus says, when he taught the disciples to pray, pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants his will to be done in this earth realm as it is in heaven. God has given us um, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is, is loosed in heaven. Amen. And so whatever that picture of righteousness that's going on in heaven, God wants it loosed in this earth realm. Amen. And to for in order for that to happen, you have to see according to righteousness. You have to be on the same page with the Lord. You have to know his ways and to to walk with him. The, the challenge of the gospel is to get God's people to receive what God has already provided. Amen. And so that's why we refer to um, the gener uh, Genesis so much. That's why we refer to creation so much. Because you look at creation, you see what God intended. You know, God did not make things mix up, uh, messed up. The Bible says God is excellent in his workings. When God created everything, the Bible clearly says that everything that God created was good. Through those six days of creation, everything that God created was good. Amen. And the seventh day was a testament to the six days because on the seventh day, God rested from the works that he had done. So the seventh day is called the Sabbath or the rest. Amen. And so what the Sabbath represented is that God were, was finished with good work. It doesn't matter if there comes a devil and tries to mess up what God has done. God's works are good. They will always be good. They are established as good. And the righteousness of God, which is associated with the gospel, amen, that the gospel will manifest the righteousness of God and show that those works are still good and that will remove wicked works, amen. And so heaven pictures what righteousness looks like. God wants that light of heaven to shine into this earth and for man to, to be sensible, to be open to the righteousness which is of God and not to and and not to be at odds with the righteousness of God, not to be of the carnal mind, to be to be enmity against God and his and his righteousness. So God has already worked. So the challenge is to get God's people to receive what God has already done. A lot of times people are trying to get God to do things. But the Bible says God has already done it. Amen. Jesus did the works of God by observing the Lord. He only did what the Father showed him. Amen. And so God had already worked. And so Jesus would go into towns and villages. Amen. Where there was unrighteousness at work. And he would undo that unrighteousness. He would open blind eyes. He would he would uh, heal. He would uh, deliver those. He would cast out devils. Amen. He would cause the lame to walk. He would raise the dead. Amen. He would cleanse the leper. Amen. He would make right what was wrong. He would confirm that the works that God did from the beginning were good works. And God would confirm that the works that Jesus did was his works. Amen. And so that's what God, Jesus was our example. That's what God wants for mankind to acknowledge that what he did was good and he has prepared good works. The Bible says that even we are a good work. Amen. We are God's workmanship, good work created in Christ Jesus for good works. Amen. Which God has prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10, that we, God has already prepared good works for us to walk in. God has a life 
for us. Amen. He doesn't live our lives for us. Amen. That he, he gives us the opportunity to walk by faith. What does faith do? It denies the things that are seen. It looks at the things which are not seen. In other words, whatever was already going on in this world that were in contradiction to God's good works and the, the personal good works that God has for you, that you had to deny that unrighteousness and by faith, that you are to uh, allow God to manifest the truth. God says, I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts of good, thoughts and plans of good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. And so even though there's things going on in this world, we are called to be one with God. Amen. And to acknowledge righteousness and what is good, to receive what God has already done. Amen. To receive from God, you have to acknowledge that God is God over heaven and earth. Amen. And so that's what we want to look at, because with God, that we have to show that we are not a part of that rebellion. Amen. See, heaven is not in rebellion against God. When rebellion was found in heaven, Lucifer, who became Satan, that the Lord flung him at the speed of light, like lightning. Jesus says, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Amen. Well, you know, lightning is moving at the speed of light. Amen. That's how fast Satan was flung from heaven when rebellion was found in him, iniquity. And he, he drew, he was called that, that dragon in his tail. He drew a third of the angels with him. So that was the rebellion. Amen. And, and they came to this earth. Adam was supposed to rule over Satan. Amen. So that the picture of God's rule will be seen in heaven and earth. God had called man to be a part of his authority, to have dominion and authority attached to God's authority. Amen. So God gave man dominion and authority, not a separate dominion and authority, but that which extended from him because we're talking about a kingdom. It is God's kingdom. Amen. And so Adam was supposed to be a part of God's kingdom to be one with God. And so you have to acknowledge, amen, to show that you're not part of the rebellion. It is really quite simple. You, you have to acknowledge that God is not only Lord in heaven, but he is Lord in this earth. Amen. And so let's let's look at. Um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 25. This is Jesus speaking. He says, and at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O father, Lord of heaven and earth. Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babes. So Jesus says, I thank you, Father, that you are Lord of heaven and Lord of earth. Now, if you have to get this, you say we don't see everything under the feet of Jesus upon this earth. We don't see everything under the feet of God upon this earth. Well, as Jesus is made Lord, we do. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. That the, the testimony is that those that are um, one with God, that have made Jesus Lord, that they are allowing Jesus to be Lord in this earth to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so the advancement of the Lordship of Jesus advances the kingdom of God in one heart at a time and one soul at a time. Amen. It is the, the spirit of man and his soul. Amen. That the Lord has to have Lordship over because the soul is, is what was given to man to choose righteousness. And if he does not choose righteousness, then there's darkness in man's soul and it would be um, hostility toward God. 
And so you, you have to, with your soul, choose righteousness. So Jesus would not only be Lord of your heart, amen, but you show that, that you make the choice to allow him to save your soul, amen. When you choose righteousness, you receive the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is the ability to see and to know that God is right and to choose that life every time. Anything that comes in your mind, in your soul, that does not allow you to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and that God is right, then you have trouble in your soul. You, you need salvation in your soul. Amen. And so that's what even faith is all about. The Bible says that we have hope, which is a anchor to the soul. Amen. Our soul is supposed to be stable and steady. Our soul is our, our mind, our will, our intellect. Amen. It's supposed to be stable and fixed on the things of God. It's, it's not supposed to be unstable. It, we, we are not um, so, supposed to be backward and forward. Amen. So, so we are, um, we are supposed to, our souls are supposed to be um, stable, amen, that, that, that we're not supposed to be one side light, one side darkness, one day like this, you know, that, that our, our mind, our soul is supposed to be stable, always choosing, always seeing righteousness and choosing righteousness, amen. Let's look at one more. A scripture where it shows that God is the Lord of heaven and earth. Let's look at Acts. Acts chapter 17. And beginning, uh, well, with verse 24. Acts 17, verse 24. This is um, the Apostle Paul preaching. And uh, he's speaking to those uh, on Mars Hill. Let's start with verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship." Him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So God that made the world and all things therein, God made the world, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Why is it so important for the, the earth dwellers to acknowledge that God is Lord upon this earth? Well, that's what that whole deal with um, Satan trying to deceive Eve and the world falling into sin. That's what that's all about. The devil was, um, was, was starting insurrection against God, using God's creation, God's people. To, to get man to rebel against God and saying, we'll set up a kingdom on this earth. Amen. And so that, that brought darkness. That's why when a person doesn't know better, doesn't know everyone that is born into this world, the Bible says that they, they operated by the, the spirit of the power of the air. And they went by the course of the spirit of this world, the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience, that, that disobedience is rebellion. You didn't know any better that the flow of this world was rebellion against God. That's why you have to break away from this world and cast your lot with Jesus and say, I don't want to be a part of that world in that world system anymore. I want Jesus to be Lord. And when you do that, that connects you with the, the, the kingdom of, of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of God is advanced in this earth realm. Now you are on the Lord's side. Whether you know it or not, you're supposed to be on the Lord's side. Now you are against 
that spirit of rebellion and you show that you are against the spirit of rebellion by your obedience unto God. So it's not enough to obey one time to be saved. You have to allow Jesus to be Lord in everything. The way, that's why there's, there's no arguments from God about his gospel. People argue about the words and dictates of the world and word and doctrine, but there's no arguments with God. Jesus says that if you believe, you would receive the Holy Spirit. So the way that you are loyal unto God is to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you into the wisdom of God and the wisdom attached to the kingdom of God and show you and teach you God's ways and help you to obey Jesus, whatever he's told you to do. You need the Holy Spirit to help you to obey. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't have that help to be a witness. You don't have that help to obey. And you're not able to operate um, fluently, supernaturally. Amen. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into that realm and teaches you how to navigate and operate in the realm of God, the kingdom of God, the spirit of God. It's not foreign to you and you don't shy away from it. Not only that, by the, the spirit of God, that that in the glory of God, that you, you look forward to being with God. You look forward to being in his presence, in the spirit of God. It is not his strength. But if you have the spirit of the world, the things of the spirit of God are strange unto you, foreign unto you. And because you have that carnal mind, they you are hostile toward the things of the spirit. Amen. I never seen so many people so hostile toward the things of the Holy Spirit and call themselves religious people. Amen. But by the by the spirit of God, that that which is of the spirit is spirit. Amen. That which is of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Amen. And flesh, the Bible says that that the carnal mind is against the things of God. It says because of carnality, you do not do the, the things that that you ought to do. The Bible says that the, the, the flesh, it wars against the spirit and the spirit wars against the flesh. Amen. So there's no middle ground there, no matter what anybody tells you. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. And the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, they are of the world and not of God. Amen. And so the world operates by lust. What satisfies me, me, me? But the, the kingdom of God operates by the spirit of God, which causes you to, to delight in the things of God and want to do the will of God because that's where your purpose is found in doing the will of God. That's where you are satisfied. That's where you are whole. That's where you are complete. Amen. So you have to acknowledge that God is not only Lord of heaven, I think, you know, that most Christians would acknowledge that, but that God is also Lord of this earth. And we show that God is Lord over the earth by making Jesus Lord. Amen. And Jesus, God honors Jesus. He has given Jesus in inheritance. Everything that the Father has, Jesus says, the Father has given to me. And now Jesus gives it to us, not separated from him. That would be rebellion, but by being submitted unto him. So you have to, and from a kingdom standpoint, you have to acknowledge that God is not only Lord of heaven, but Lord of earth. That is what separates those that are of God's kingdom from those that are of the devil's kingdom. That is what separates those who operate by the spirit of God and that spirit of antichrist, amen, which denies that Jesus has a rightful place to, to be Lord over the earth. Antichrist denies that Jesus came in the flesh because if Jesus came in the flesh, then he is what he called himself when he walked upon this earth. He, he, he called himself son of man, amen. That, so he was born, amen, of woman. 
He had a rightful um, um, part, a rightful place to be in this earth realm and to operate by the anointing yet without sin so he could be that sacrifice that makes everything that the devil did illegally, it is judged, amen. And by the word of God, we walk in righteousness and judge the devil, amen. When we receive the word of righteousness, that is blessing and righteousness unto us, but it is judgment against the devil, amen. And so let's look at Psalm, Psalms 24. We want to keep on this theme that the earth is the Lord's. Though he gave it to man, he leased it to man, but he has every right to be Lord over this earth. In Psalms um, chapter 24, I want to read the whole chapter because it, it has some relevant points that, that will um, help us, point us toward Jesus. Amen. It says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So the earth is the Lord's, the fullness. Think of all the goodness of the earth or any glory attached to the earth. It belongs to God. So that, in fact, the earth had glory. When God made it, amen. And so the Bible says the whole earth shall be filled with the glory of God as the sons of God um, become sons of glory, amen. And walk in righteousness, we bring the glory. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And the glory is the place of the habitation of God. The glory speaks that, that God has a right Amen. To be Lord in that place. So any place that the glory comes, God is able to inhabit that glory and take over that place and to exert his lordship. Amen. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So all the people belong to God. Amen. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. So it says, it starts out by saying the earth is the Lord, everything is in it, and the people. Amen. And it says, so who will ascend? Who can ascend to the holy hill of the Lord? Amen. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. So it's, it's talking about that dynamic, about the person that acknowledges that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those who act accordingly. That, that violence, um, sin, carnality, murders and strife they all they all happen in darkness amen so where there is sin there is darkness amen or you could say the kingdom of darkness is operating amen so who can ascend to the hill of the lord amen those that have clean hands those that acknowledge righteousness that god has a right he created this earth and it is his, the people are his, and you begin to act accordingly, amen, then you can approach God, amen, because you're on his side, that if you were against God, if you were, if you were in hostility against the Lord, then you would be, you would come against him, amen. But those that are for him, they seek his face diligently, we'll look at that. Amen. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. So that's making a place for, for the Lord. Amen. The acknowledgement that God is God, that he has a right, that Jesus is, is Lord. Amen. That you are a you you make a place for the Lord to come in and for by the by acknowledging Him, 
Amen. And so you, you open up the door for the glory. Amen. And the Lord will descend upon his glory. Amen. He will come in when you open up your heart. Amen. A gate represents that which closes up a city. In the city walls, there was a gate. Amen. And those gates were closed. So when one is welcome to come in, you open the gates wide. Amen. And so Jesus is Lord. So it's talking about um, opening up your heart wide to let the king of glory come in. And that would allow glory in that place where he is. Amen. And so it says, um, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? It, we know who it is. It is the Lord strong and mighty. So this is the, the Lord as a conqueror. He's, he's conquered your heart. Amen. It's, it's, it's like someone coming in. It's like a warrior, the great warrior coming in, a champion, and you opening up, um, inviting him to come in. Amen. Because it says very clearly that who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies of God. Amen. That's who you're letting in. Amen. That this conquering king, this conquering Lord. And so he will bring that lordship when you allow him to come in freely. Amen. So again, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. So we have to know that the earth is the Lord's and the glory is God's. Amen. The fullness thereof. Amen. And you have to know that God is Lord of heaven and earth. That God is Lord of heaven and earth. It's an attitude. Amen. Why? Because the spirit of the world gets upon earth dwellers. Amen. And the spirit of the world is a spirit of sleep and slumber and intoxication. Amen. It is a spirit of rebellion against God. And it is so subtle that many times people don't know that they are rebelling against God because they have become their own gods and in their righteousness, they believe is attached to themselves. Most people believe that they are pretty good. And they compare themselves to themselves. They compare themselves according to the fact that they believe they're pretty good. That means everybody else is a little bit less than what they are. And, and they look at people in varying degrees of being less righteous than them. Amen. And so they have um, 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 said that they are their own gods. It's what the devil told Eve. You shall be like gods, knowing both good and evil. You will be able to, do this, to decide what is good and what is evil. Amen. And so that there's moral relativism. Amen. Where you're trying to say that you know what's right better than anybody else. But it is God's righteousness that's right. And you don't even know all of God's righteousness until it is revealed. Righteousness has to be revealed unto you. Amen. God makes you righteous by giving you Jesus' righteousness. You have to trust that you are justified by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And that the blood of Jesus even cleanses your consciousness from those old dead works. And now the Lord begins to teach you another way. The Bible says they shall be taught of the Lord. Lord. And so the word of God is taught to you by the Holy Spirit. And what is he teaching you? Righteousness. Amen. So that you can have the mind of Christ. Amen. And to walk in righteousness. And it's not foreign to you. Amen. And so you have to acknowledge that God is Lord of heaven and earth and that the earth is the Lord's. And all the, 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 the glory, in other words, you give glory to God, it, it brings glory back into this earth realm. Amen. You are humble. You, you acknowledge God. You're not boastful in your, in your own um, righteousness, in your own works. Amen. It would be very prideful to deny God his right to be king of the earth. So you see how pride sets in. It would be very prideful 
for you to deny God access to his earth, you see. And that's what people do, that the Lord means that. If, if Jesus is Lord, that means he's Lord over your whole life. That means he gets the chance to make decisions where you work. You know, what is your purpose? Amen. What are you called to do? Amen. What are the right relationships for you? Amen. Not to, 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 to um, lord over you in a bad way, but because he loves you. He, he knows better than you do. He even knows the future. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what is prepared for you. He knows when you're on the right path and when you've gotten off the right path. Amen. The Bible says in the 23rd Psalm that he leads us in paths of righteousness. Amen. And so that whole path that we're we are walking is illuminated by the Lord and by the word and by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. The path is supposed to be a path of righteousness. The light will show you that you're walking in the right place. And when you got to off of the path of the good works that God has prepared for you. Amen. And so he has that right. It's, it's all about who's in charge. Are you trying to be in charge of your life or is Jesus Lord? Do you trust Jesus to be Lord? Amen. Why did he go to the cross for you? Why did he suffer? Does that not does that not give him some kind of right? Amen. Because he suffered and died and bled for you to have inroads into your life. Amen. So that your life will glorify the father, which is in heaven. Amen. It is the part of Jesus that you're walking in. It's actually Jesus. Your faith will manifest Jesus. Amen. That that is a pleasing aroma unto God. Amen. If you if you lose your life you gain life. Amen. You find life. Amen. But if if you try to, to find life, you lose life. Amen. If you're trying to live a life without the Lord, you're, you're, you're losing the life that God has for you. Amen. And so it is the way which is of the kingdom. God has every right. Amen. To be Lord in this earth realm, all the people, the Bible says, are his. And, and God says that he has given Jesus the heathen for an inheritance. God actually gave the people to Jesus. You belong to the Lord. You are his people. You're the sheep of his pastor. Amen. That's supposed, you're supposed to be led by the Lord. Amen. And so that means that you have to bow to Jesus. You said, that sounds like harsh language, bowing to Jesus. This is kingdom talk, and it is the reality of God. Is not Jesus Lord of all? Amen. Is not he king in heaven? Amen. And then he should be bowed to. That's how you show who's in charge. That's how you show who's the king. You know, five people in the room, one is the king. How do you know? Everybody else is bowed. The four people are bowed to the king. Amen. So turn with me to Philippians chapter two. We just want to establish a framework, amen, of spiritual sight by seeing into the kingdom of God and seeing by the light of the kingdom of God. Amen. Philippians chapter two. Amen. Philippians. Chapter 2, we'll begin with verse 3. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 3. And so I want you to see the relationship of how you're supposed to act compared to how Jesus acts. Amen. And so there's supposed to be a similarity. There's supposed to be a similar mindset by how Jesus conducted himself and how you are to conduct yourself. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. That means, you know, trying to be seen of man. Vanity is what that means. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Amen. That's what Jesus did. He did not come to this earth to be served, but to serve. Amen. He, he washed his disciples feet. He, everything that he did, he did in compassion and love for his people. Amen. He served them. He healed them, delivered them. 
He served them. He fed them. Praise be to God. But it says, um, but let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in Fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is every form of being. Things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth must all bow to Jesus. And not only that, confess that he is Lord because God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name because he humbled himself unto death, even the death which is of the cross. Amen. He humbled himself as low as anyone that can be humbled. Amen. So he is given a name above every other name. No greater love hath any man than to lay down his life. Amen. But Jesus was without sin. Anybody else that could have died would have had sin. Amen. And they would not have been a proper substitute. They would not have been a proper sacrifice. Amen. Jesus humbled himself as low as he could go. So God exalted him as high as he could be exalted. Amen. The Bible says the same thing to us. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season. Amen. The Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. It would be a prideful thing to deny Jesus his place as Lord. Amen. And so we have to acknowledge that Jesus is not only Lord of heaven, but Lord in this earth realm by making Jesus Lord over our life and that continuous lordship throughout our lives. That's how the lordship of Jesus advanced. That's how that trail of glory is increased. Amen. That that place of God is is made. God inhabits the praises, but he also um, he, he inhabits the glory, his glory. Amen. The glory is attached to God. If you if you glorify the Lord, you are um, giving the Lord his place. So you are attached to God. God can be there where you are because you are glorifying the Lord. Amen. You are saying this place is the rightful place of God. And God is able to be there by your humility, humility, and by your um, glorifying the Lord. Amen. And so every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess that Jesus is the Lord. And it is not only in heaven, but also in earth, because that's where man is. That's where man's sin. It's so important to bring the glory into this earth realm is so important to bring the lordship of Jesus. And so let's let's go over this parable real quickly. This one that we started on, um, I believe it was uh, yesterday for those who are keeping up. Matthew chapter 21 It's found in more than one place, but I'm going to read it in uh, Matthew chapter 21. And I will. I'll summarize the parable and then I'll, I'll tell you some things about that, that parable. Amen. The, Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46, Jesus tells a parable about a, a Lord, a master that has a vineyard and that um, he leases it out to um, tenants, husbandmen, and to take care of his vineyard and at the right season that he would come for the fruit. Amen. And so that he sent servants to get fruit from the vineyard because it was vintage time. And uh, the the tenants, the husbandmen, that they, they stoned and killed and persecuted the servants. He would send other servants and they would stone and, and persecute and kill those servants. And he kept doing this and they kept 
of persecuting and killing the Lord's servants. And all that the master was trying to get was his fruit. Amen. Because he had leased it out to them. And so finally he says that I'll send my son. Surely they'll reverence my only son. And so he sends his sons, his son, and the husbandmen of over the vineyard, they see him coming afar off. And they said, this is the son. He's the heir. Let's kill him and take his inheritance. So I want you to get that. The only son, their thought was, let's kill him. And then the inheritance will be ours. So of course, this is demonic. This is what the earth, this is what the devil wanted. Amen. The devil wanted the earth. He 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 tried to kill the the seed of God all through the scripture when um God had told him that the seed of woman would bruise his head. He was trying to figure out who's the seed, and he would um in in the days of 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 Egypt that that. He, they, they killed the male children in the days when Jesus was born. They killed the, the male children, the devil. In the days of Noah, he tried to destroy the earth. Amen. He has always tried to take over the earth and to get it to be completely in darkness so all the seed would have been destroyed. But the seed was Jesus. Amen. And so the, what the parable is, is of course, it's talking about God. God created the, the earth. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. He leased it out to man. Amen. And he said to man, have dominion and authority, guard the garden, be fruitful and to multiply. Amen. And so the way that it works, and I won't go all into it, but you know how the Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And it talks about how thou crowned him with glory and honor. Well, that was a crown of glory that was attached to God's crown of glory. As long as man was submitted unto God, he was able to have dominion and authority. Amen. Attached to God's authority. Amen. And, and by that, he would be able to give God his, his fruit. And the fruit is fruit of righteousness. And righteousness is to keep things in the state of good. How God created them in that blessed state in that good state, God gave man authority, his authority, just like God gives anointing. And what is that authority and that anointing for? It is to keep things in a righteous state because you are on God's side. You are not of that rebellious spirit of Satan. Amen. But the, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Satan says that the only world that we need to be concerned about it's not heaven, but earth, that your life is found in this earth realm. And so this is where we'll build a kingdom and we will not allow Jesus his rightful place as Lord. We will not allow Jesus to rule over us. I told you about Moses. They said about Moses, who made you judge and ruler over us? That was a type of Jesus. And he had a rightful, he had a, a right to rule over them. Amen. When God anoints and sins, that's the one that God has sent with authority. The baptism of John, it was from heaven. He, he had authority from the Lord. He had a right. Amen. And so Jesus has a right to this earth. Amen. But they killed him on the cross. So let's look at a few of these, of this symbolism, and, the, and then we'll end Amen. The, the servants, we said that that was the, the prophets. Amen. That God would send, you know, and apostles. Um, those that were free from the allure of the world, given the task at, of giving direction and instruction from God so that God would have righteous fruit. Uh, so, you know, with the prophets, they would they would prophesy. They would show the people where they were off. And try to get them back in line so that they would give God fruits of righteousness. So the earth would look like what God intended it to look like. When God looked for justice. When God looked for good and peace. And people to defend the widows and, and the orphans. That's, what, that's fruits of righteousness. God would look for that. 
when, when people were full of bribery and violence. And, and so God would deal with his people to try to get them back into that place of righteousness. And so he would send servants. And what did they do? They killed the prophets. Amen. And, and even the, the, the priests, those that were in charge of the law and, 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 and the, the, the scribes and the priests and the Levites and all those people that God had, had given authority to, to keep the people straight, that many times those people were destroyed because they carried the word of God, the voice of God, the message of God. And for people who are rebellious, they have no place for the message of God. Amen. And so they will kill the messenger. Amen. In the, um, the Bible says that the, the vineyard that God had hedged it about and built a tower. That hedge is the word of God and precepts. Amen. A hedge is like a wall. Sometimes it would even be, you know, an actual hedge, but it was a border. It, 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 it kept the boundaries confined. Amen. And so that hedge is the word of God and the precepts of God. The wine press is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says that the, that the master had put a wine press in that vineyard looking for fruit. Amen. Um, the tower, he put a tower in that vineyard, that the tower represented his name. Amen. The name of the Lord is like a strong tower. The righteous run into it and, and they are safe. Um, the tenants are the earth inhabitants. Amen. Um, God's people. Amen. And the master sent those from a far country. The far country is represents heaven. And the son, of course, represents Jesus. Amen. And uh, Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not. Amen. And so um, there's a lot of symbolism in that. But in it, you see the history of mankind. That is all God. It was God's creation. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He leased it out to man. He asked man to give him righteous fruit. Man instead rebelled against him and kept Killing the prophets, kept killing the prophets, kept killing the prophets. Amen. Persecuting the prophets. Amen. And the prophets would point to Jesus. Finally, the Lord sent Jesus. Amen. And that he was crucified on a cross. Amen. And so that is the picture, the image, so that those of us who come after Jesus has gone to the cross, that we know that the, the, the history of the earth. What happened? Why are we in this predicament that we are? And what should our response be? Amen. So, Father God, thank you for that word. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to teach us your kingdom, Lord God. Help us to understand in Jesus' name. Amen.